The mystery of a vanishing exoplanet. Dr. Brad Tucker and I dive into this Talking Science Story of the Week. Across Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, this is Talking Science with Dr. Brad Tucker and Matt Miller. Alrighty, well, our last story of the week is a vanishing exoplanet. Put another tick in the Hubble Space Telescope column here. Former Holt B, this was what was believed to be the first exoplanet directly image. So uh, not where we see the planet passing in front of the star and the light changing or bending of light, that it was kind of a direct image, just as the way we can see Venus in the early evening skies or in the early morning skies, you can see Mars and Jupiter and Saturn. And so Hubble has, has been imaging this for quite a few years now is to see its orbit, to try and measure other measurements and parameters of the planet. But what they've noticed is the, the clump of light that was from this planet is getting puffier and puffier. And it appears that this planet does not exist and maybe never fully existed in the way we thought. This, this one is very cool because Hubble first spotted it in 2004 and, as you say, has been keeping close tabs on it. And, and as we can see in this image here of the gradually this dissipation uh, of, of the light from 2004 to, to 2014, we, with, that in, with that in my mind looking at that, that clearly is a planetary explosion. But astronomers can't just come to that conclusion, can they, Brad? They, they have to have evidence to back it up. That's right. You have to test all the other options that it could be. And, and so this is where repeated observations in different types, different telescopes um, really try and help it put it together. But it does appear to be conclusive. And so you you know, you know, also use a lot of modeling, a lot of physics to see what other options could create something like we're seeing and what other evidence would produce that we can help rule or, or not rule it out. But it does end up being kind of clear that something dramatically happened uh, and uh, a planetary collision in the truest sense. And it, if it goes back to it, we, we think this is actually way common, more common than we may think, uh, going back to the moon and how the moon was formed in our own solar system uh, and uh, seeing evidence of this in other planets now where they've seen lots of uh, dust, infrared. So this is very bright in infrared colors. So having something like this where when you can put it together and say, all right, what other things can we draw on does make it seem quite unique, but also quite, I guess, important that this is one of the first ones that's been pinpointed as a, as a direct image of the planetary system, and yet it is maybe the end of a planetary system, or just never fully formed in these solar systems that are quite chaotic and things crashing around, maybe never formed and it broke up b before it actually came together. Based on the researching the density of the debris disk, there's an estimate that a smash up like this should happen about every 200,000 years. So it's an incredible stroke of, of good luck um, that, that Hubble was just looking in, in that direction at that time uh, for, for, for this very exciting um, um, observation. Yeah, this is kind of, I think, one of the, the always interesting things about astrophysics, especially when we're looking at things that this time scales are thousands and, and millions and billions of years. So you, you can look at it two ways. You can look at enough of these so you stack the odds in your favor. So, you know, if it happens every 200,000 years, if we look at 200,000 planetary systems per year, hopefully we get one per year, right? You could stack the odds in your favor or you just get lucky. And then you think of all the things that happen on longer timescales that we just haven't been lucky to witness and, and those critical pieces of evidence or information that we just haven't seen because we haven't looked for long enough or far enough or deep enough or wide enough. And this is always the great thing about looking into space is when you build a new telescope or instrument, there's always the things that you know you don't know that you want to go understand. And then there's the things you don't know that you never knew that when you look at it, you're like, oh, there's a whole new <laughs> thing here. It's a whole new world. And uh, then it turns into a whole new set of inquiry and testing. And this is a great example of this. And lastly, Brad, on this one, uh, the debris field is thin and dispersed now, uh, something that Hubble's, as we've talked about, has, has tracked over, over the last decade and a little bit. Uh, it's now around one AU, one astronomical unit in length, which is about the size of the Earth to the Sun. That's There's some scale involved here. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of the entire almost Mercury, Venus, Earth, all the way to the sun. That's this debris field. So it was a huge explosion. But this is exactly when we see young stars and the planets forming around them. It is a really wide field of debris and gas and dust swirling around it that eventually clumps down. So it's definitely a snapshot of matches into what we think 
goes on into these planetary systems. And it, I, I think it's quite interesting because, you know, going back to every 200,000 years and how big this is, it, things, you know, it's we think of the universe as this thing that doesn't really change, but it's actually quite chaotic. And there's a lot of things dynamic, dynamically happening and collisions forming and explosions happening that the universe is in motion and process. And as we're stuck in quarantine, uh, the universe keeps going regardless of what we do. 